Howdy chaps and welcome back to another XA Coupe Guy episode. Today we are working on the XB a little bit. Uh, this evening we'll be doing a bit more. Um, I'll run you through what's happened since the last time I was tinkering with it. Um, my fuel gauge stopped working again. And after changing the sender unit back and forth, pulling the cluster out, trying a different fuel gauge in it, thank you to the people who, the chaps and mates who have these parts and are willing to just give the willy-nilly and I like if I have the part and somebody needs it have it it's just that simple um, it's the Ford community is quite good like that if you come across a lot of mates um, so a few people have given me parts so I could test and try things and it worked out that my gauge wasn't broken and neither was my center unit so the sucky task of having to replace the sender line from the back of the dash all the way to the tank had to happen and that really sucked um, but in that swapping of sender units I managed to doing the last little bit I didn't seal it up properly I didn't must have got the o-ring just slightly off and it wasn't leaking till it got to the exhaust shop when they were putting on the two and a half inch twin system to make it sound proper and they got most of it done mufflers and they put little dump pipes so I could use the car but it sounds terrible like that so this afternoon we're gonna fix that issue by going to another mate's workshop in Seaford and we're going to use a hoist and we're going to put the tailpipes on so it doesn't sound like absolute garbage um, so yeah the center unit was leaking in the exhaust shop rightly so didn't want to weld anywhere near a petrol soaked fuel tank I was like where's your where's your sense of adventure I mean you won't even know if it explodes you'll be just dead instantly but no they didn't want to I was like okay I guess so there's that. I also had another mate. Really, he gave me a chin spoiler um, for the XB. I was so stoked. I was like, thank you, Jesus. Um, very, very happy with that. I'm actually installing that right now. I'll put you through it in a second. Um, and I binned the bench seat and put in the bucket seats that another subscriber um, sold me very cheap way back at the beginning of the channel that I had acquired and never got around to fitting. So I'll show you a few things that I've done right now. So the keen observers of you will notice that it's got a chin spoiler. Very hard to see because it's obviously black but it looks tough. Yes and obviously it's now got the GS grill in it. That might be better to see. It's very hard to see. I don't know how it's going to look on, on the camera. And what is it with all the noise in the area right when I'm trying to film? But yes, there we go. And bucket seats are in. I have a console, but I haven't put my console brackets in yet, so obviously they're not in yet. But the interior is starting to come together. That is so much nicer to sit on, even though they're trashed. Um, but they sort of go with the patina of the car, so it sort of works in my opinion. Um, this car transmission is still not replaced yet, and it is leaking so badly. <laughs> you won't find one leaking worse than that one. But these chin spoilers are surprisingly simple to install. A little bit awkward, I will tell you that. But pretty much, you just get a bunch of self-tapping screws. Hold it up, put one in the middle, because literally only one's holding that on right now. You put it in the middle, and you just tech screw through the thing into the body. And then when it comes to the sides, I always line this swoop into here. So they sort of, if you imagine an imaginary line, join the two of them, sort of somewhere there. That's how I do them, and then you just put a screw in the corner. So that's going to go on, and it looks absolutely amazing. Here's my tailpipes that weren't installed. Um, I'll put a little clip on in a second of how the exhaust sounds uh, before. Oh, super quiet, super tame. And um, how it sounds this afternoon once it's fully done. So I hope you enjoy this episode. It might be interesting, it might not be. I might run you through some rust repairs that I'm doing on the XB. I've actually... Uh, did the corner the other day, did it all properly. Uh, where's the old piece? Uh, old piece, there it is. So, 
All right, this is actually a two-piece thing if you look closely at it there's like a piece there and then another piece that sits in and they weld in and around the grooves focus but yeah I'm doing that as well so um, I might show you some of this it's gonna be an odd episode so don't panic but yeah that's in there and looking pretty so yeah I'm gonna tech screw that on and then I don't know figure it out as we go eh? Just briefly, one other thing that we had tickling along in the background, <laughs> a side note from being very bored when I was reassembling my engine crane, um, <laughs> I had loads of weird leftover paint and we were doing a bit of a clean out so it ended up in multi different colours. I mean it was already faded and multicoloured before but now it sort of looks like a child's been at it um, with Crayolas. <laughs> but I don't know, I think it's funny. So we put this 351 which I have checked, it is actually a 5.1. It was sitting in the shed at home next to the Landau and it's been there for about five years. Um, C4 is only sort of, I mean that's not C4, that's an FMF. FMX, that's only bolted up to basically hold the back of the engine up and have somewhere to put a starter motor. So there's no torque converter in there. Um, got this motor, my brother bought it for $500 umpteen years ago. Uh, he then put a cam, lifters and valve springs in it and then never did anything to it and never ran the cam in. So that cam has been sitting in there all on its lonesome, brand new for five years. And unfortunately, it'll be interesting, I hope it doesn't die because all of the uh, grey assembly lube, not all of it, but a good portion of it, went to the sump over the last five years. So we're going to prime this motor thoroughly, prime, 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 and I have new running in oil, new cam braking oil, all the stuff, so we're going to try and save it. This motor's kind of cool, when the sump was off I had a look in there, and it's got new uh, connecting rod bolts, the rods have all been um, like tw uh, tweaked a little bit so they all weigh the same which was interesting I was like oh somebody spent some money in here and it's got a 4MA crank in there which is obviously the American 351 crank but it's got 302 heads on it or at least closed chamber heads so I'm thinking and the cam that he put in is quite meaty so I'm like this motor if it doesn't chew the cam out on running in fingers crossed should be quite a good engine. I think that might be quite acceptable. And of course, the only downside is when he put the cam in, he didn't put a cam, uh, the fuel pump eccentric in there. I was like, why did you not do that? Don't know. He can't remember why he didn't put one in, but it wasn't in there. And when I took the timing cover, off, the fuel pump off, I meant fuel pump, the water pump timing cover. I looked in there. I was like, ah, great, it's not in there. So I went to put one on, but the timing set in there. The hole was too small to let a factory um, fuel pump eccentric bolt to it, so I had to change the timing set. So that, from basically just put bits on it to it could sit on an engine stand and run in, um, ended up being quite a large job. So that's fun. Anyway, here it is. It's basically nearly ready to go. Obviously, still needs a starter motor and exhaust and a few things and whatnot, but. This might, we might run this in in a week or two or something. My brother was supposed to come down from Sydney, um, but as everybody well knows, um, Ikshne on the Ovid say sort of kicked them in the pants quite spectacularly at the last minute, so that's a bit sucky because I haven't seen him in a very, very long time. And we were going to run this motor during together because that would have been a fun thing to do with your brother, but apparently the state government decided that nope nobody comes in <sighs> wonderful anyway that's just a bit of personal stuff happening and it drives me mental anyway but we'll run this in whether he's here or not i'll just film it for him so he can enjoy the the magic of it without him here which kind of sucks but i will like such is life so like i said it's going to be an odd video today um i finished up this area i did my bit of filler work um 
actually come out really nice very happy with it I've got to tackle this gutter um, rust and probably goes to about here it's might to put a small section in here and then a little bit there and maybe a touch at the other end but I'm having a moment because I can't quite remember where I was up to with filming but I'm sure when I'm editing I'll figure it out but that came out good so now that's done that's done this is done that's done and the corner is done so technically all the window area is all good so now I've just got to probably wire wheel like a crazy person through here and figure out just how bad that actually is I don't think it's that bad I've also since then actually fully screwed on the chin spot on the XB every time I look in the sun it changes maybe if I go down here yeah it looks pretty good uh, and of course I have primed up put in the oil and well I'm going to prime it again when the time's right but I've got all the oil all the running in oil and all the braking stuff up to the lifters and dribbling back down so it's now all there and I've rotated it a couple of times by hand slowly just to sort of get everything lubricated we took the electronics distributor out we're going to put in a points one because we need to well it's just going to happen because we haven't got all the right bits to make an electronic one work I've got to plug this put a radiator in it um, and then that's and then obviously at home there's some big headers that will go on it and then put a fuel line on it and we're laughing obviously a fuel tank and a battery and my gauges my oil pressure gauge still works <laughs> so it's getting there we'll run this in in a probably a week I reckon maybe next week I don't know in the time off so yeah killed the drill <laughs> whoops a daisy but making progress slowly but surely it's going to be a real odd video today I don't know if it's going to be any good but some people like watching it whether I do anything reasonable or not so someone will be happy no matter what happens <laughs> chaps we're uh, down at JC Mechanical in performance opposite the Bunnings at uh, on Seaford Road there's Josh we've been playing with the uh, exhaust it's now got two pipes and I tell you what the person who put it in I have no idea best thing not to think about it yeah, it sounds alright okay, give it a couple little blips of this rotel it does sound better now I think I could be happy with that. Sounds like a V8 now. Definitely a lot happier. Oh, it sounded like absolute ass before with the uh, the mufflers with the little downpipes. Yeah. Obviously, need to tweak it a bit, put some uh, tips on it, but that'll do for now. I can't even be bothered cutting them. We put new shocks in too while we're here and uh, yeah if you need anything mechanical when you're down the uh, southern side of Adelaide be sure you drop in he's happy to work on old school stuff did you want to do a little tour of your workshop maybe you can't be bothered right in the people's feelings <laughs> pretty much mm. yeah but you do most things don't you <laughs> Well, that'll do me for the night, I reckon.